So I talked about briefly about the heart chakra. Um, I have the sound bowl given to me by a, a holy being, actually, a very sweet. And it really got me thinking about the chakras because this is for the fourth chakra or the Anahata heart chakra. I said that last time. And it's supposed to activate the heart chakra. And the heart, it's the science behind the chakras and there's, there's a, a lot of uh, deep studies done on the chakras and the science behind them, not just the spiritual uh, kind of meaning and ramifications. Of course, if you begin at the root chakra and you take care of yourself first, the Mulandara chakra, you take care of yourself and your family and it just, in order to serve the Sahasara chakra, the top chakra, which is service to God and complete service to God, in order to have that kind of um, revelation, you must first take care of yourself and all of the chakras and in the heart, which is the fourth chakra, when you realize uh, uh, an activation in the heart chakra is when you start to really realize that serving the first chakra is serving the heart chakra and serving the, the collective or being a God's servant is part of your root chakra. But of course the diet and the hard work and uh, the things that the exercise and, and, and restrictions of certain poisons and activities, that's, that's serving the self. It's a very critical and important component because people, you ever see people burn themselves out they're doing all this good for everybody else, but then their body is falling apart. And then they're not really alive and awake in the way they could be because they're so burnt out by giving. A good giver is a great getter, it's true. But you have to take care of yourself to serve God. To take care of the temple, they would say in the Bible, wouldn't they? So I say that because I really see a lot of people stuck in their first chakra selfishly um, uh, and, and this leads to greed and all the things that really don't cause happiness you think you're taking care of the first chakra and you're doing all these things uh, stealing or or misrepresenting the, the truth or, and all of these things just so you can protect you know the ego this idea of a Brittany Basha yogi speak of you know fear of dying or fear of not realizing uh, what it is that you dream about you know so you, you, you do these things that, and selfishly you, you think you're serving yourself, but selfishly you separate yourself from God and you separate yourself from the real uh, root, the real cause of happiness. So if you're serving the first chakra, uh, then you are serving the rest. Because as a person, what, what do you do with your exercise? Where do you go? What, what Can you spend time and... Can you spend your energy helping helping others? You know, and does that and can you derive happiness from the work itself? Can the work become your prayer? Very important. The work is the prayer. The results of your labor really have not much bearing on your happiness. It's when you're doing the work, when you're present and awake and and serving God. This is where your real happiness is coming from. Uh, and no one thinks that. They think they want the end result, but they don't realize the work uh, is where it all lives. It's where all the happiness lives. And I can say that, but yeah, I want the check. I want the, the resolution. I want the greater good served, you know, whatever I think it is. But during the process is where you grow. This is where enlightenment comes, and this is where happiness comes from. So I just wanted to go back to this talk about the chakras because people seemed interested to know you know why you know, why is it that uh, if you're such a spiritual being you must serve the Mulandara or the first chakra first because you can never serve God unless you serve yourself first and how you serve yourself has a lot to do with the spinning chakras and the Sahasara chakra it has a lot to do with the rest of your spirit because it's not when you say I'm serving myself it sounds like it's, you know, a selfish act. Um, God said, take care of your temple. Watch what you eat. 
exercise, uh, to do the things that straighten you out. I mean, and also, when you're taking care of yourself, yes, put up boundaries, but don't lock yourself out. Don't live in a bubble. Don't be, don't, don't, don't be a miser. Don't build up things that you don't need because they're going to cause suffering and then you're still stuck, never leaving the first chakra, uh, trying to figure out how to take care of yourself. There is a real science to that. And from there, you can evolve. All of us want to be, uh, we claim we want to be enlightened, but it's going to require obedience to God. It's going to require obedience. And I'm really, you know, trying to stress that there's a way to take care of yourself and there's a way to take care of everyone in the collective uh, as part of the process. And I'm thinking about it because, again, playing with this bowl, I'm getting better. Last time you saw me, I was... Can we activate our hearts? And can, when we activate our heart, can that become part of the, the root chakra's work as well? Can they all be related? Can your creative and your and your your service and your all can all those things be part of an obedience to God? If we can bring it all home, this is what enlightenment feels like, looks like. It's a process, and so we have to really, you know, we have these books, these scriptures, and I, I was saying the other day, scriptures are etched inside you. Maybe somebody sat under some tree, an LSD kind of a, whatever that science, the drug, there's a, there's a scientific name for the thing they use to make LSD. You know, when you sit and you open up the heart, and if you do a Vipassana, maybe a 14 day or a 10 day Vipassana where you meditate for, for 10 days and 14 hours a day, it's almost like taking plant medicine. It's like revelations come, you sit through the pain and you continue to sit. And then revelations come. All of life's journey is about self-discovery. There's no shortcut. Uh, it, it's a process and you have to do the work. You have to have some reservations and some restrictions um, and some patience. And we have to accept the, the, the little wins. You know, we get used to doing what God wants until it's natural. Then the next thing that was a a challenge, something we maybe fell short. We work on that daily until one day it's such a normal thing that it happens every day. And then the next thing you get rid of that is not serving you. And then before you know it, you have a, not a clean slate, but a cleaner slate. You have less things that are hurting you. You eat, you're not, maybe you, you stop eating animals, right? And maybe after that you started to walk every day. And maybe after that you started to, to, uh, do yoga maybe or you started to meditate twice a day and it started to help to clean up and then before you know it you have all these good habits and when you have all these good habits and that's all your day is filled with is God's work or work that served God or serves the top chakra when you do that or the, or the heart chakra when your good karmic work and your meditation and your physical practice and all these things just consume you. You put down the, maybe the cigarette, maybe the alcohol, maybe you smoke too much weed. And you think, oh, each one of them is like, oh my God, I'm giving away something that promotes happiness. And then you find the clarity of not drinking. It kind of feels good. The lungs open, the cigarette, you didn't need it. The, you find that each one of these things that were given to you by society that were promoted to you by some lower, lower energy in you. You find that as you relieve yourself from these things, you start getting lighter and the ascension to God gets easier. And the final result is self, full self-awareness, full self-discovery, full self-realization. And when we realize the self, we realize God. Sounds like a lot, but it's really simple. Because the things I'm talking about, you don't need the scientific, you know, I gave you a bunch of Sanskrit words that are more narrow in their description. But it, I said the other day also, good, just do good. 
The word good is a motherfucker. Good. I'm going to do good. Not like I got away from robbing the bank. We made it good. Not like that. I did something good. I did something in service for God. Good. You know, dropped my kid off at school. Good. I showed up on time to take care of the collective or to, to this philanthropic or social or political cause that helps other people. Good. I did good. And if we continue to do those things that serve God, that serve the greater cause, the greater collective, and activating the top chakra, the Sahasara chakra, the service, and that wakes the heart up, because the heart is already the reason you're doing it. And then in the bottom, you love yourself enough that you can spare the time to give others. When you love yourself, you're not um, consumed with stealing or, or, and I'm stealing, when I say aparigaha, non-greed, I'm not, you're not consumed with being greedy. You know, um, so what is it? Non-harming, non-lying, non-stealing. Asteya, let me see. It's, um, in Sanskrit, you have uh, ahimsa, satya, asteya. Brahmacharya, yeah, non-stealing. Don't steal. And steal could mean more things than just take shit. Right? Steal. Just these things that we already know. You don't need a holy man to tell you, or you don't need the Bhagavad Gita, the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, the Yoga Sutras. You need a clean heart. And the clean heart comes from cleaning the heart if it's where it's dirty. Sometimes you lay down and you feel bad because you haven't lived up to the person you want to be. I saw Kevin Lyles said something about it. Being the person you want to be. You put it on Instagram. I'm doing this. And you look at it and say, that's me. I am doing this. Take credit for your goodness in your own heart. Right? Don't, you know, don't be so hard on yourself, but be good. Be happy with the goodness you do. Let it consume your heart. Let it be part of your process. Because then you continue to consume your heart with goodness. When that heart chakra, that anahata chakra, is really being fed and, and, and through feeding it, it's the feeding of the collective or giving to everyone else. You win. Good givers are great getters. You become even successful in the worldly sense in this lifetime when you follow God's law, when you're obedient. So that's enough preaching for today. I just felt like rambling. And I, because I started playing with the bowl again, what's that fuck with this bowl lately? Let me share some stuff that might inspire somebody. I love when someone tells me, I read your book. I told you this the other day. I read your book and changed my life. Get the fuck out of here, my book. Um, or, I, you know, I, I tried that meditation thing. It quieted my mind and my anxiety subsided greatly because of it. I changed my diet. I stopped eating animals and, and my blood pressure went down dramatically. Um, I tried some of these, the word again comes up, good things, and the good things promoted good to me, and I became a better person, happier person. Selfishly, we all want to be happy. We have to get past the, the what they're promoting to us, what they're selling us. There is no coat, car, house that you can buy that will give you happiness. The things I'm prescribing to you that are obvious, that are over and over in every scripture and taught by every prophet, those are the things that promote happiness. Happiness, I like to say the Yoga Sutras is a science book that is the science of happiness. Those eight limbs, those, you know, the laws, that are non-harming, non-lying, non-stealing, control of energy, not to, you know, and non-greed, and then cleanliness, contentment, Tapas, hard work, dedication, focus, resilience, tapas. Swadhyaya, study of yourself or study of any scripture will teach you about your higher self. And Ishwara Pranidhana, uh, giving your, all your efforts to God or to the greater good. And then the physical asana practice. So these eight limbs are a prescription for happiness. They're not a prescription for, for boredom. Oh, that's boring. I tell people, oh, that's boring. I don't want to do that shit. My brother used to tell his friends, like, you know, a lot of the niggas we grew up with were gangsters. Joey, not so much, but they all were 
yeah, when he became hot, he was surrounded by kids from the hood that we all knew, but they had the money as drug dealers or whatever. They could travel. And, uh, and so we were surrounded by gangsters. You know, once you get a hit, and Frank Sinatra, surrounded by him. So, they're around you. How do you, how do you escape? Right? And I think that uh, the experiences that I saw for young people, uh, so many negative, small ideas are, are, were entrapped by so many. And how do you get out of it? How do you get out of buying stuff, junk? How do you get out of the pursuit of happiness in all the wrong, uh, going in all the wrong directions? And then what happens as you get all the stuff that you think you want, then sickness and sadness really sets in. How do we get out of this cycle of negativity? Commercialism and, and consumerism and, and really, really, I, I know everybody says it's good and you look on Instagram and you see it and, and I, their rap beef is about what car I got that you don't got. After a certain age, maybe you realize that none of those things had anything to do with your happiness. That the poetry itself, writing it, and expressing yourself creatively, that when the Manipura chakra was working, that creative chakra, the third chakra, when it's really expressing itself, there's a freedom in that, and a happiness that comes from that. And then when you get the stuff, the results, the things you claim you wanted, they don't cause happiness. And that's why Krishna says you have control over the fruit alone, but never it's, it's it, no, the work alone, but never it's fruit. But then it goes on, when you read the translation, it goes on to talk about how the work again is the prayer and the re result, results of the work, which we have no control over, will never be the cause of your happiness. They can't give you shit but a comfortable seat. So, we, we say it, we have to learn to believe it. Even I'm struggling trying to believe it. You know, I, I, I say I want to serve God and I'm building toys and things that will help other people and benefit other people, but still some ways serving the ego. But I know that the end result is just pure service to God. And I have enough faith in it and I'm moving towards it as best I can as we all should be trying to, to let go of the stuff that they've been teaching us, the poison they've been giving us, the poisonous ideas that we are, that are instilled in us. After having been born an enlightened little baby, we are taught so much that we have to unlearn. Let's unlearn it together. Let's, you know, as, as individuals, let's go read a book. Go read important books. It reads The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Read Super Rich. Uh, it's the only way I can describe what scripture is teaching me. Um, try to just do holy things. Read holy books and serve. And with all of these things put together, you will create a much happier, longer life that you'll be proud of. So when you sleep, you're good to sleep with yourself that a lot of the things that would trouble you you've eliminated and you've grown out of so be proud of yourself for each step but keep taking the steps namaste yogis thank you for listening to me i hope somebody gained something some small tidbit stuck in someone's head that will help them to be happier